September 10th, we started the morning off at the Master Vantage. We watched 70 elk break into a group of 34, and the remaining went out into the desert. In a way, we, we lost track of them about five miles out. We watched this herd do about a six mile, five and a half, six mile loop up. We watched them go in through the timber, pop out, go into their next patch. One bull, 33 cows. This bull's a six point. We were 30 yards away from yesterday. He's a really nice bull. Couldn't get a shot yesterday. He heard us. We watched where he bed. We came down 2,600 vertical feet after climbing that, and we took a nap. Yes, a nap. Not really. We just laid low, ate food, um, checked a couple trail cameras, and then we made our trek up here to the bench point. And we built a blind, and we waited out a rainstorm. And I told Jake, I bet, I bet those elk get up because it just they're probably wet. Might as well get up and start feeding. We cut the distance, and sure enough, we saw eight cows up and feeding. We're going to get them on camera for you next. And we're going to hopefully hear that bull bugle on his own and then decide, are we going to go back to the blind and intercept? Or are we going to have to, are they going to stage there till dark? We're going to be aggressive and try to kill one out of those 34. Easy. to the public land hustle. This is an evening hunt. We've located elk, we've put them to bed. It just rained, it stopped raining. We're moving in on these elk. You can hear cows mewing right in front of them. We assume that's a herd bull. We assume he's not very far away. This cow is maybe 50 yards away from us, and it's not that thick of timber. So guys, we're in the elk's bubble. She hasn't moved. We understand that this cow probably is pretty hot. Our best bet is to be quiet and move in slowly. He's close, guys. We don't need to vocalize. We're in their bubble. This is where good stuff happens if you stay patient. That was a glunk if you didn't catch that. So we're gonna try to slip in on this bull and this cow. Like I said, I think they're under 50. We don't have visualization yet, but we are focused on getting in the right position and being patient and not giving away our location and just playing the bubble game. I hear brush break and I immediately get ready to take a shot. 
You guys will start to notice the wind is picking up. Now that bull is close, but we just can't figure out which bull to go after at this point. I can smell that he was just here. God, that just went by. There's one over here. She's pure luck at this point, God, 34 elk. Now I see movement and I instantly throw my glass up. I see the bull, or a bull. So we're going to try to slip in on this bull. I hear antlers going through the brush. This could be a different bull, so we immediately go over to check it out. We're also running out of camera light at the moment. I pull back, I'm on the bull, and I immediately notice it's just a rag bull, not the herd bull. That wasn't the big bull, dude. We just heard a bugle back this way. Yeah. So that was worst case scenario. This is called bubble elk hunting, and it's hard, and we tuck our tails and do the walk of shame back to camp. Big bodied elk. September 11th uh, update. Um, so the game plan today is to, we're going to work through this timber and make sure the elk aren't here. Probably bump them if they are, but maybe see them before they see us. That's the game plan. Let's go. All right guys, Dan found that ball. He's bedded. I'm gonna stay here. Video. And Dan's taking his shoes off. Leaving his back. All right, guys, so I got this bull bedded. I saw him before he saw me still hunting timber. It's a very viable methodology to hunting elk in their bedroom during the day. The wind is high, so it's going to cover my sound. I take my boots off. Jake stays back to film. Jake's at about 120 yards from this elk, zoomed in with the handy cam. And I already ranged him from right where I'm standing, and I got, oh, I'm probably just about 100 yards. And my goal is to get 50 yards closer to this bull he is bedded down with three other bulls, and we don't know their location. So while Jake's filming, I'm moving in, and I end up getting within 44 yards of this bull. On my way to stalk him, he actually stands up because the sun is hitting him. It's not super mature timber like elk do. He's going to go ahead and stretch out, maybe feed a little, and rebed. I'm out of camera right now. I'm off frame. I'm way to the left. And once he stood up, I thought for sure I was going to get a shot right here where he's standing. I don't have a shot. You guys obviously 120 yards away can see him straight away. And so I'm thinking he's going to walk through a couple different lanes. So I'm knocked on, ready to go, looking to put an arrow in this bull. But as luck would have it, this bull is going to end up walking only 10 yards and re-bedding down with the three other bulls. And so I'm left to sneak in. And this is my target bull. He's a, it's a nice five point. And the other three bulls are all four points and five points. Pretty raggy. And they're hanging out on September 11th. Just kicking it. This is pretty cool footage. I love stalking elk in their bedroom. As long as there's not too many eyeballs and ears. It's not the easiest way to go. And you have to go slow as molasses. But if you keep the wind right. I like taking my shoes off. Especially in this terrain. It's mainly just no underbrush, super flat, super easy walking, and just slip in slowly. So the bull goes over and rebeds, and I start moving in. So this is filmed on my cell phone. I'm at 44 yards from this bull. I don't have a shot angle. 
I'm going to have to wait for him to stand up. I am pinned down by the other bulls and where they're bedded, and so I can't move much further. So I decide to just wait him out at 44 yards and shoot him when he stands up. The wind switched for a second. I was waiting for them. So if the bull stood up, I was going to shoot him at 44. But the way he was bedded, and that he just rebedded, I was like, man, I don't trust the wind. If I just go over, I can, sh I could probably shoot him in his bed. At least I want to look at that shot angle. And I was just about there. And one of the bulls was bedded looking uphill. And he's a five by five as well, but he's not as big. <laughs> and uh, he was kind of like, so I was like, just wait him out. And I couldn't move unless it, the wind blew. You know, a lot of times the wind would stop and it'd be like, yeah. But I had a four by four, like uh, 27 yards. Deal. I was like, gosh. No, no, it's just to the left of the big five. Yeah. Yeah. From but, here, looking through binos, and I was watching you, and I could see that little four. I was like, holy shit. And I was like, he's so close. I was close. I was, I could have shot the big five, but he was in his bed. I don't want. And his scalp was just blocking all his vitals. Yeah. And if he stood up, there was, I had a very narrow window with just what I was at. So I was like, just take your time and slide over. It'll be 44 yards still. Um, and then I felt the wind hit my neck and I was like, no, 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 no. And then they jumped out of there like a bat out of hell. Like they didn't even stand up and like stare. It was like, yeah. Four by four, a five by five, and a five by five. I didn't see a cow with him. Did you? Nope, I didn't see a cow. It was good though, man. We made that made all day to do. It took us all day from dark oh dark thirty to find those elk, to put them to bed, to wait for the wind. Why would the wind go down for a second? Every hunter's worst nightmare. What's up guys? We've got that camera angle so you can't see mountain ranges in the background. I don't know if many people would want to hunt here. Elk are spread out. They don't bugle that much, at least during daylight hours, and they travel really far. So, uh, last two mornings, man, the elk have been doing different things. They haven't really been vis uh, visual from our uh, vantage, and this is very much a glassing game. Like I said, they don't talk much, so we don't hear them and we don't see them. So now we gotta go find them. Hopefully we can get into some elk today. I'd really like to get uh, one of my arrows through both lungs of a bull. So we're almost at 10. We're gonna top out at 10, five at one point. We've got two more timber patches to check. And then after that, I don't know the plan. We'll figure it out from there, so. So we hiked into this glassing spot and we got here kind of laid down waiting to hear some bugles and it's like midday so we decided to take a little nap I'm pretty sure that was around like 10 30 11. I passed out it's a uh, 105 right now so we're gonna get something to eat and get after it yep. 